Well, welcome to Coffee with Job, number 26. It's Monday morning, and today we're going to look at this question of how can I answer the God who made the, the stars, the all-powerful, all-knowing God? As Job says, how can mere mortals prove their innocence before God? This is chapter 9. Though they wished to dispute with him, they could not answer him once in a thousand times. His wisdom is profound, his power is vast. Who has resisted him and come out unscathed? He moves mountains without their knowing it and overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth from its place and makes its pillars tremble. He speaks to the sun and it does not shine. He seals off the light of the stars. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He is the maker of the bear and Orion, the Pleiades and the constellations of the south. You know, actually, let me stop there. I think we're just going to look at the... the the all-powerfulness of God, uh, and maybe tomorrow we'll look at the incomprehensibility of him. Now here, there's a real level of intensity in Job's reply. You contrast with Bildad and his view of God. Bildad has God in a box. Job doesn't. Job is deeper. His faith is stronger. It's more imaginative. It's more adventurous, and therefore it's more demanding and painful. Bildad has this legal thinking and in keeping with that, Job is coming along and he's saying, hey, let's take God to court. Or let me be taken into God's court, perhaps is a, is a better way of putting it. But he's saying this is useless because God is so great. How can I, how can I answer him? Now, Christopher asks, talks about God being, Job being right and wrong at the same time. He's wrong in his understanding of God, but right in his heart for him. Verses 5 to 7 talk about the omnipotence of God, the power of God, the God who creates all the stars. I used to walk home in the Scottish Highlands where my home is and um, very little light pollution and I'd walk home from Tain Academy from a dance or something along the Morit Moor and just looking up at the stars and just awestruck by them, utterly awestruck by them. Job will later go on to talk about these being but the outer fringe of his power. And he's saying God is all powerful but is he good? That's the problem, isn't it? Because if God is all-powerful, that's the, the standard problem of evil, as it's stated, is an all-powerful God would be able to prevent evil. A good God would want to prevent evil. But it's not as simple as that. Ash, I love what Ash says. You see, what Bildad does is what many people do. God is just. Bad things happen to you. God must have done them. Therefore, God is justly punishing you. You must have done bad things to deserve that. It's logical, but it's not biblical. Instead, li listen to what Christopher Ashe says about this. I think this is really helpful. If we may put it this way, some of God's actions express his character, while others are outworking of his longer plan to deal with evil. When God acts in steadfast love and faithfulness, these actions express his character directly. But when evil things happen, God is acting through the agencies of evil powers and his actions do not reveal his character. They are part of his grand plan to turn evil to good, to defeat evil, but they do not immediately reveal his character. I think that's important. A father loves his children. He sticks a needle in them. Does that reveal his character that he likes to, to put out pain? I don't think so. He could be doing it because he's giving them an injection to help them uh, with pain or an illness. The little child doesn't understand that. And we often don't understand what's going on in our lives or in the wider world. But we have to believe, along with Augustine, that our God is so great that he is able to bring good out of evil. I always... Rather than try to understand God and his power and how all that fits in, I accept that he is powerful. But I understand God through Jesus. So through Hebrews 1, in the past God spoke to our forefathers, to our ancestors, through the prophets many times and in various ways. But in these last days he's spoken to us by his Son, whom he made heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The Son 
is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being. You want to know that God is good, you look at Jesus. God is all powerful, God is good. I think we'll leave it there and we'll come back tomorrow to see how Job deals with the invisibility of God. But please stick with that. The God who made the stars, the God who made the twinkling stars is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God be with you.